Hi there, and welcome to the digital painting tutorial entitled Painting the Road Home. My name is Melissa Gallo, and I'm going to show you how I created this image using Painter 2016, a software program by Corel. You're going to watch me decide exactly what to paint in an image and how I adjust the photograph to better suit my needs. No cloning or filters were used to create this painting. I simply painted the image using some digital paints and brushes and my digital canvas, the computer screen. This is the image I've chosen to paint and the main reason is because I have an obvious focal point here. Now, choosing a focal point is extremely important when you're going to make a painting. Without a focal point, it's the equivalent of sitting in a car and not knowing where you're going. You won't go anywhere and you won't take your viewers with you either. So always choose a focal point first. And for the most part, it looks most pleasing when it is placed on the rule of thirds tic-tac-toe points and I'll show you what I mean. Painter has a really neat way of finding out um, a rule of thirds composition. It divides the whole painting into thirds vertically and horizontally. If you place your focal point at these little tic-tac-toe points here then most likely you will get a very pleasing composition. So remember focal point number one is incredibly important. It's the first thing you have to decide on. What do I like about the image and where am I going to take my viewers? Now that I've decided on my focal point, well the next thing I'd like to do is change the color of this image a bit. And I've opened up an, another image of a color wheel here and I've chosen an analogous color scheme which means one color flanked by two other colors. Essentially, I'm going to stay within this range. Now, you'll see me add some oranges and warm greens, but essentially the painting is going to be within the range of these three hues right here. So let's put this aside. And now I open up the underpainting panel, which you can reach by going to Window and down to Auto Painting Panels and over to Underpainting. And I'm going to change this image. Make sure you're clicking on the image you want to adjust. And I'm just going to move the hue slider to the left and then desaturate it as well. So I think that looks about right. And apply your transformation like so. Now it's important to note that once you've chosen your focal point, you have to do everything in your power as the artist to drive the viewer to that place. Now ironically this image is called the road home and in, in effect once you choose a focal point you have to choose the roads that will take you there. One of those roads is composition. Putting your focal point on one of those four tic-tac-toe points by dividing your image into thirds vertically and horizontally. Another way that you can drive the viewer to the focal point is remove any distractions. And as much as I love this farmhouse here, this would definitely distract the viewer. The viewer's car would crash right into this. It would never make it to here. So you have to always step back and look at what is distracting you from getting to the focal point. So when I paint this image, and you're going to see that, I will not paint in the farmhouse. I kind of paint in the value of the farmhouse, which is a medium gray, compared to the values of the rest of the painting, but I actually do not put that farmhouse in. Here is the completed painting, and as you can see, I have quite a lot of layers here. I have 89 layers plus a signature layer, and I'm going to turn off each one of these and work my way up from the bottom to show you exactly how I developed this painting. Before I dissect this painting, I do want to mention that I am using the Italian watercolor paper, which comes packaged in Painter 2016. It's a wonderful paper. And two of my own brushes. A watercolor one brush from my watercolor set and pastel side from my MG Pastel Sticks uh, brush set. Now, before I begin this process over here, I am going to show you the basic technique that I used. 
What I'm going to do first on my actual painting is create a watercolor underlayer and over that I'm going to create pastel layers. Now when you do a watercolor in Painter, your best bet is to make sure that you have a file size that is very small and a resolution that's rather low. So this is only 6 by 8 at 180 dpi. Now, I'm using that same paper that I'm going to use that I used on my actual painting and I'm going to just start with my watercolor brush here and I'm going to just paint away and as you can see as soon as I do that in Painter 2016 now you get a watercolor layer that's automatically added and you just paint a little bit like that. Test out your brushes. You can uh, then open up your real watercolor panel which is found by going to window, brush control panels and all the way down to real watercolor. Open this panel up and click on pause diffusion. That is going to keep the colors from running until you've unchecked that. So what's really really nice is to have a bunch of colors and when I do the underpainting it's it's really rather loose and then maybe running into something else and then running into something else. Okay. Make sure you put on a lot of color. So get a lot of there we go. And now uncheck pause diffusion and you can watch the colors actually run into each other. And this is a great way to create um, a very loose underpainting, um, but still suggestive of the values that you're going to find in the image. Now on top of that, I will now add a regular layer and I'll, I will just start painting with my digital pastel. Before I begin painting with those pastels, however, I will resize this document to be 300 dpi. So this is now 8 by 6 at 300 dpi. So it's important to remember that your watercolor work has to be done on a lower dpi because it helps the brushes move faster. But when you go to the other brushes, uh, pastel, oil, etc., then you can have a document that is of 300 dpi and you don't have to worry. And your document can actually be larger. It can be an 8 by 10, a 9 by 12. Um, Painter 2016 um, can now handle all of those document sizes and the brushes work very very fast. So I've created my new layer and this is my pastel layer and I can literally on top of this and I'm using the pastel side now just start with different strokes of pastel and allowing some of that underpainting to come through allowing some of it to come through. And I love working with this technique. It is so much fun. I use this technique in traditional media when I paint in pastels. I'll often use um, an underpainting, a watercolor underpainting, and then um, put my pastels over that. So this is really a lot of fun uh, to experiment with and just play around with. That underpainting is very important because it will establish the basic color of the shadows and also allow you to choose the values, the basic values of your image before you start your work on the top. Well the very first layer, you guessed it, is the sketch. Now unfortunately I did this sketch on the canvas because I was just so excited about this image. You really should do your sketch on a separate layer. but. That's how it happened. So, and I don't know what this mark is. You're going to see all of my mistakes. You're going to watch me struggle as I make different decisions, redo and undo different steps until I reach the final painting. So here is a sketch. This is the watercolor layer that I was talking about. It's very loose. It's the underpainting. So because this was all purples, and oranges and some blues, I decided to make this a bluish green, which is almost the opposite of what's going on here, to add some tension to the painting. It's very subtle, but this watercolor layer will come through 
um, and the subsequent layers of the painting. Then I just started applying my pastel very freely and really this is the fun part of the painting. You could see the little um, photograph right here. And just have fun. And I, I want you to notice also how I made sure I really put in the trees around the focal point. I want to know where my focal point is. So oftentimes I will start indicating that first. Then I added the darks right away. I started adding the drama of the trees because I felt that this was very, very important. Okay. Um, that also will act as a guide for you, not just your sketch, but getting in your darks and lights. And that brings me to another road that leads us to the focal point, And that is the road of value. If your values are not correct, meaning the light or dark of a color, how dark or light a color is, it doesn't matter what color you put down, the painting will not read correctly. So look at this little image here and squint. And you can see what areas are dark, what areas are light, and what areas are perhaps a medium gray. And in fact, Painter has a great way of figuring this out. Window, go down to Auto Painting Panels again, to the Under Painting Panel all over again, and desaturate your image. And then punch the value down, and now you're going to see what are the lightest areas of this image and what are the darkest areas. The focal point should have the lightest and darkest area next to each other or fairly close to at it sh there should be the greatest contrast of value I'm not talking about color now at the focal point that's why I eliminated this farmhouse see that very light roof there against the dark trees this would be calling everyone away from the focal point which I have placed here this is where I want to lead the viewer so this far farmhouse had to go this contrast had to go and I'm going to put the greatest contrast right here. So that is how one of the ways that you lead the viewer to the focal point. You have the lightest colors and the darkest colors right here. You're also going to use the brightest color at the focal point and very oftentimes the sharpest detail in that area as well. Those are all the roads you take to the focal point. If you go off on other roads you won't get to your destination. They might look pretty and really nice and you might work up a section of the painting that's just beautiful but it distracts and it, it leads everybody away from where you want to lead them to. So you have to always step back and ask yourself what is distracting me from the focal point? That's the question painters are constantly asking themselves as they paint away. If you need to take a break, do so. Step back, stay away from your painting, and come back to it later on, and you will see immediately what's wrong with it. So now that I know my values here, I'm going to do that same thing, and let's undo this. I'm going to do the same thing in my painting. I'm going to make sure that I have the darkest area here and the lightest area here, and I'm not going to put this bright white area in over here because I really don't want to distract the viewer. So let's go back to this painting here and we're going to go back down to our layers here. And as and now I start to refine the painting a little more and a little more. Now I'm getting darker. So now you can see if you squint you're really starting to see the values take place. Dark, light, gray, dark. Okay. Then I will begin to add and start refining. Here I'm pushing the dark. Okay, so I started out fairly light and now I'm adding more dark. Details. A few more details. Getting more dark in there. Some of the stones, which I'll remove and put back again. Okay. Little by little, I add on. 
it's a matter of pushing and pulling the viewer's eye right here. And now I decided, you know, this area is um, really too empty. So I've begun to start adding um, some tree trunks. You'll see that happening. Now I add some blue in here. And why do I stick with blue and not just um, this wonderful bright peach? Because I really don't want people to hang out over here. I want, remember, bright light colors also attract the eye. I want them to be drawn back into the into the picture, especially because this is a landscape. Now I'm accentuating these trees on the right. Little by little, I add things. Now I experiment, and you know, watch me. So I said to myself, that's a little too dark. So I cover it up again. I go back to adding some light areas. Now I'm working on this area. And I will redo and redo this area as you saw that I just did. So I will come back to that area over and over again. Now I'm adding some trees here that were not here. Remember, I have to resolve this area where the farmhouse was. And what does that mean to resolve something? It means that it has to look correct, it has to be painted correctly, it has to be drawn correctly, but it cannot detract from the focal point. Resolving a problem means how do I paint this in a, in a believable manner and in such a way that it will lead the eye, everything has a purpose in this painting of leading the eye to the focal point. And that brings me to another road that we take to the focal point, and that is accurate rendering. You cannot just draw any old way. You have to draw correctly. And the reason why is if you draw something incorrectly, the eye is going to pick it up and get very distracted. Think of riding in a car again and seeing a car crash on the side of the road. Everybody slows down. Well, a badly drawn tree or a bush or a road is a car crash. And the eye will be distracted because the eye will know it's wrong. Now, some have said, well, in landscape painting, it doesn't matter. Oh, yes, it does. It's not as um, important or terribly important as in portrait painting. One flick of the brush in the wrong way can change a person, person's look. That's true in portrait painting. But in landscape painting, you really need to give accurate suggestions. Yes, not every leaf has to be drawn, but you have to give the impression of trees that are believable. Go outside and start observing trees and notice that they're never straight and their canopies are never completely round. They're, they have very irregular trunks and very irregular canopies. So accurate rendering is another road to that focal point. And here I'm playing around with adding darks to pull the viewer back into the painting. And now I'm just experimenting with this tree over here, putting in different things. And you'll see little changes as I go along adding a few more branches, and I'm always correcting, of course correcting, course correcting. This area will be corrected. This area was corrected over here. Now I realize, you know, the trees in my photograph are really much darker in value than I had them, so I added some darker values you can see there and here as well. Now I've got some light areas in my photo but I don't want that because again I want to pull the eye away from the farmhouse area into the light and the distance.
Okay. And we are up to layer 82. I'm darken this because I really like the way both sides of the photograph are rather dark and pull the viewer's eye in. And now I'm really refining this more. Remember that trees are most likely not evenly spaced apart. If you have three trees in a row, so I realized these three were evenly spaced, so I had to adjust them and move them over, and you'll see me do that. And I added some more branches. And then another limb, which wasn't there, it's almost like an arrow saying, look this way. Short of putting an arrow in our painting, we can have branches and trunks and guidelines that lead, lead the viewer to the focal point. I decided to darken this because this light area was distracting. And the final step is adding your signature. And that was the completion of the Road Home Painting. Thank you for joining me today. You can see more of my work, digital painting courses, and brush sets on my website, melissagallopaints.com.